With the stroke of a pen, the U.S. president tries to put an end to the child separation crisis that he created. No word yet, however, on what's planned for the kids already separated from their parents. President Trump's directive orders Attorney General Jeff Sessions to challenge a court settlement called Flores versus Reno. Now, that case says the government cannot keep children with families in detention longer than three weeks while they wait for their day in court. But New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is not buying what the federal government is trying to do. This executive order, uh, I don't think, does anything uh, of legal significance. I think it's more of a press release than a legal document. Uh, and if you read it, it basically says, unless they go to a court and get the court to change what's called the Flores decision, the Flores settlement, which has been a 20-year-long court battle, uh, you can't implement this. Uh, that's why, uh, literally, uh, it's, it's just about the press and trying to slow down the press. With us now, criminal defense attorney and civil rights litigator Brian Claypool. Brian, welcome back. Is the, yeah, is thanks, the president's sir. executive order then legal? Well, the, the president's executive order is legal, but the bigger question is, what does it really do? In my opinion, it's a political paint job. And what I mean by that is, once you scrape away the paint and look underneath it, there's not much substance to it. And by that, what I mean is, the only real thing, Cyril, that's changed in this executive order is one thing. President Trump is now saying that the kids will not be separated from the parents for 21 days. Remember, he's saying no separation of families. But right. that only happens for 21 days. Everything else stays the same. There's still a zero tolerance policy in place. He's still going to prosecute every single illegal immigrant for yeah. a federal misdemeanor. And, and we'll he, get back to that in, in a second, but I want to make this Flores thing clear to our viewers because I think that's yeah. critical. Um, the executive order does not say that kids can only stay with their families for 20 days. It doesn't mention a time period. It says they can just stay with their families. What you're telling us right. is that there's another law in existence which, which means, which implies, dictates that this can only that they can only stay together for three weeks. Great, that's, that's a good point. If you ever lose your job as a journalist, you should be a lawyer, <laughs> because that, that was well said. So basically what President Trump did is he punted Cyril on the timeline. He just said the kids won't be separated from the parents consistent with the existing law. He doesn't tell the rest of the country, though, that under this Flores case, the existing law says that these kids can only stay with their parents in detention for up to 21 days. Mm. So the big million dollar question that the whole country and the whole world's gonna be looking at is what's gonna happen now on that 22nd day? Are these kids then going to be separated from their parents? And in my opinion, there is a very strong likelihood that these kids will then be separated again from their parents. So there's a three-week clock that starts from the moment families are detained, probably today or tomorrow. I mean, pretty much yeah. as that executive order was being signed. Um, what happens to the 2,000 children who've already been separated from their parents and who apparently yeah. are not being reunited with them? Well, that's a great question. That gets back to my prior point, which, with, which was what's really changed with this, this executive order. It doesn't speak to that issue. It doesn't help the parents who've been deported, for example, try to reunite with their kids. And think about this, Cyril. It's real logical. This is a no-brainer. If, if a parent has been deported, let's say back to El Salvador, how in the world are they ever going to get back on U.S. soil to try mm -hmm. to find their kids? There's nothing in place with our government to help that. And let me tell you one more quick point. I've been a child advocate for almost 15 years. I have worked with abused children. I've represented them. I've worked up forensic psychological analysis of kids who've been abandoned and abused. And I will tell you, point blank, that this is a form of child abuse. These kids are going to be permanently impacted and, and, and traumatized with PTSD for the rest of their lives because of them, their whole lives being uh, put in shambles and their parents being taken away from them. And well, nobody's talking about that. And, 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 and Sarah, one more thing, th th this could potentially lead to human trafficking of these kids. These kids are ripe for human trafficking in the United States. Hey, hey Brian, you know who agrees with you on the, uh, if not the PTSD, at least the, the trauma 
uh, it's the American Association of Pediatrics, and they put out a statement a couple days ago saying pretty much what you said. Um, right. One last thing. The president wants to make illegal immigration a criminal matter, okay? That's what was new about his policy. Before, it was a civil matter. What, what difference does that make? Why is it important? Well, with, with, with a, if it's a civil matter, then you don't have to be detained uh, uh, to see a magistrate for a criminal federal misdemeanor. And, and, and if it's, if it's, so it's a civil... Exactly. With a civil matter, basically with President Obama, what would happen is you'd cross the border and then you'd be processed within a you know, couple days and then you'd be sent back because it's a civil matter. You don't have to go before a federal judge for a federal uh, you know, misdemeanor. And, 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 be, and, and that's a good point because what it does is it creates a log jam. We, we don't have enough judges now to handle every person being prosecuted criminally. And that, that, that's what makes this 21-day window very uh, unattainable. Mm -hmm. And that's what leads then to the separation of the kids from the parents. And by the way, President Trump doesn't have to do this. He, does, he could prioritize, Cyril, prosecuting the illegals coming across the border. Look at their background. Let's focus on gangsters and, and those with a, a, a nefarious background. He doesn't have to prosecute every single uh, illegal immigrant crossing the border. And yet that is still the target of the Trump administration. They're actually trying to get to hit that 100 uh, percent mark of, of criminal prosecutions. Brian Claypool, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me, Cyril.